First of all, I want to go to uh, Professor Watanabe briefly. Shall we reflect a bit about the words used by Prime Minister Abe during his speech in Pearl Harbor? He talked many times about the victims, Professor Watanabe, without necessarily explaining what he meant when he talked about the victims, who were the victims. Secondly, he has been talking about speechless entirely and also utter silence, yet fail to apologize. Professor Watanabe, from your perspective, how should we understand this? Well, well, first of all, thank you very much for having me here tonight. Great to have you, sir. Uh, I'd like to ask, uh, I'd like to, uh, yes, thank you. I'd like to uh, answer your first question. I think the um, uh, Mr. Prime Minister's uh, uh, idea was to uh, express his uh, uh, deepest regret and also uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, very deep sort of uh, sense of reconciliation and uh, also, you know, pay tribute, particularly to those who have been killed uh, in, in the um, opening of this Pacific War at Pearl Harbor. Uh, so uh, that was the uh, uh, kind of the uh, uh, first uh, group of people that uh -huh. he wanted to address. But at the same time, he mentioned that all those people who have been killed in the Pacific War, so it's not only limited to those who have been killed in the uh, uh, Pearl Harbor attack by uh, Japanese forces, okay. uh, but also, uh, you know, his idea was to cover entire uh, dead, uh, those who sacrificed themselves uh, during this four-year uh, war in the Pacific. Professor Watanabe, I certainly heard your and word. Of course, you are now responsible for coming up with the specific test of what a Prime Minister a Abe said, of course, at the Pearl Harbor, but what you have just explained is a little bit away from what he said. In fact, he did not mention at all about Asia Pacific, this phrase, during his through, throughout his whole speech. And he never mentioned specifically what those victims that he was referring to in his speech. On that point, I would like to go back to Professor Pillar in the United States. Uh, Professor Pillar, we have heard from the Japanese Prime Minister that he talked about the partnership and alliance of hope with the United States. He talked about tolerance and reconciliation. But Professor Peeler, as we all know about history, it has to be remembrance and reconciliation. What do you make of this very different phrase coming from the Prime Minister of Japan? Well, I think, I think the Pearl Harbor visit for the Prime Minister of Japan was really a way to reach to talk to the American people. Uh, it was also an opportunity to have a, have a diplomatic meeting with President Obama. And I think, the American, I think the American government certainly, and I think most Americans do not seek an apology from Japan. I think um, there has been a great deal of reconciliation by both countries. And I think, Ameri and I think one of the reasons was that most war crimes against the United States during World War II were directed at American GIs. American civilians were spared uh, for the most part for many of the war crimes of Japan. Mm. So we have a very sort of different war that we experienced in the United States. Uh, and I think Americans don't have a great understanding of the, the extent of the Japanese war crimes, particularly in China, but also Korea, the Philippines, and other parts of Asia. Mm. So I think there is a gap. Also, I think Americans really think of World War II uh, as starting for them in 1941 when in fact China had been in war since 1937 with Japan. Right, 1937 or even earlier, uh, Professor Drew, you are Yeah, now you can even go back to 31, 31 yes, Manchuria. when it really began. Uh, Professor Drew, now you are based in Nanjing, earlier named as Nanking, then the wartime capital of China. And the Nanking massacre was one of the biggest atrocities done by the Japanese aggression during the Second World War. But my question for you, Professor, is when you are coming from that specific city, when you are looking at history, what do you make of Prime Minister Abe's words this time? That he talk about Americans, <coughs> he talk about Japanese, and he talk about people from all over the world without at least once at all 
mentioning Asia Pacific, Pacific or people in the Asia Pacific. Yeah, I, I think that's also the points of the big controversy we can easily just identify from the Abe's uh, visit to the uh, uh, Hawaii. So then we heard the words of the tolerance and the reconciliation. Of course, the two words are very, very good. But the problem is uh, uh, tolerance to what? Tolerance to the Abe's historical revisionism? <coughs> tolerance to the Abe's some sort of ambition to revi uh, revise Japan's peaceful uh, constitution? Tolerance to Japan's uh, some sort of selection in expressing their uh, condolence, for example, as you mentioned. Uh, the victim is a very vague word. He definitely came to the U.S., but so talking to the American people uh, 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 simply, but also very, very definitely. But the problem is, victim is mostly including a lot of uh, Asian victims. Mm. So how, uh, I think the Chinese curiosity is always going that way. So why not Abe uh, uh, just uh, choose to visit Nanjing and also showing some sort of con condolence? If he can do that, then I think the Abe's sincerity probably will be at the position uh, being harder to question. But if he just uh, always chose the U.S. to show the condolence, then the question also unstoppably just like coming out how sincere, how serious Abe will be mm -hmm. to express such a reconciliation tolerance. I understand your point. So I have to go back to you, Professor Watanabe. Once again, I want to make very clear here, Professor Watanabe is not representing the, Jap the Japanese government. He's not here also to explain the, about the Japanese government's stance. But I do want to have your Japanese perspective, Professor Watanabe. What do you make of what uh, Professor Zhu just said? That why not Prime Minister Abe come to Asian countries and cities, places where the biggest atrocities were done during the Second World War by the Japanese militaries then, and only chose the United States. One would have a second thought of exactly what he had in mind. Is it about the history, or is it about the alliance? Mm. Well, thank you very much uh, for giving me the floor again. Uh, the, um, uh, you remember the, uh, uh, in August this year, uh, Mr. Prime Minister Abe uh, did a, a speech in which he mentioned about his deepest uh, remorse and uh, sort of uh, feeling of culpability uh, of the uh, atrocities uh, what had been committed by Japanese imperial forces during the World War II. And uh, that was not only that uh, speech in August, but many other speeches that he made. Uh, for instance, the one that he uh, uh, gave the speech at uh, uh, U.S. Congress last May. Uh, he also mentioned about uh, you know, his feeling of deepest remorse, not only to Americans, but also all the victims uh, involved in the Pacific War. So uh, I think, um, uh, you know, the the apologies have been done in the different places, but not here uh, in uh, Power Harbor. In Power Harbor, this is occasion to uh, uh, express uh, the feeling of reconciliation mm. between the uh, very sort of uh, bitter or bitterest enemies. This is the wording that Mr. Obama used uh, during his speech today. You see, the, uh, even the, the, the worst enemies uh, like Japan and the United States can uh, get together and work together for world peace and stability after 70, 75 years. Okay. You see, so this is more significant uh, of well, uh, his visit to Hawaii. Do you buy that, uh, Professor Zhu, that uh, <coughs> remorse equals to apology? And why has there been so many occasions that the Prime Minister of Japan, whether it's Prime Minister Abe or the others, shy away from just using simply the word apologize yeah i think uh, uh rhetorically and literally we say uh, yes japan repeatedly doing that but the problem is uh, how it will work it depends on how the other victim countries just feel like mm -hmm. after they hear the abe some sort of uh, such a, a remorse or, or apology either way but the problem is we also see the curiosity as well always is there it's harder to to erase the reason is 
I think a couple of things, for example, so if Abe, Abe is really very sincere and honest, he should just uh, say, come down to the Nanjing as well. Mm. So then we will see uh, it's uh, some sort of uh, uh, fair for the Asian victims. Just the Yula question is very sharp. So yes, we also see the Abe partially sincere, but just uh, definitely towards uh, his ally, the United States. But the problem is we also needed to see some sort of uh, equal sincerity uh, for uh, uh, Asian countries. Mm. So then uh, we're also looking forward to the Abe's visit to Nanjing. If he could also just uh, show his condolence and uh, some sort of the salutes to the last or, or killed people in the Nanjing Memorial uh, uh, House, then we will see that will be uh, some sort of uh, a bigger move. Mm. The Chinese would like to feel we, we, we have to ease down. All right, Professor Peeler, some have been comparing Germany and Japan over the past few decades since the Second World War. Germany renounced the war, Nazi war, and Japan never did, even though it renounced the use of military during the war and also had a peaceful constitution, even though that part of the constitution is likely to be changed very soon. Professor Peeler, how would you make that comparison? What does it really say to us yeah. about Japanese attitude from your perspective? Both the United States, but also our allies in World War II were very clear that Germany must accept responsibility for its war crimes. And as early as the 1950s, for example, Germany paid reparations of the state of Israel uh, for the war crimes it committed against the Jewish people. It, um, it suppressed the Nazi party. Uh, it is a crime to deny the Holocaust in, in Germany. Um, and it is vigorously prosecuted beginning in the 1950s, uh, war criminals, that war crimes committed by Germans uh, in World War II. Uh, at the same token, the, by the same token, Germany was allowed to rearm. Um, and there is no clause in the German constitution renouncing war. Japan has sort of had a very interesting track. It has, it is, it had renounced war. And I'd say, I think something, something we, we regret that the Japanese put in their constitution. Uh, during the Cold War, we very much relied on Jap Japan as an ally uh, against communism. Mm. Um, and I think one of the, the legacies of the Cold War is there was not a full reckoning, reckoning with the crimes committed by Nazi Germany and Japan. Uh, we, for, we forgave a lot of Japanese militarists who were able to reenter the Japanese government. Um, uh, I would also say that um, while the Tokyo war crime, war crime trials were very important, they did not leave the same legacy as Nuremberg in, in, in Europe. Nuremberg, particularly within the United States, but also in Europe, has really been, been viewed as the gold standard of war crime trials. Mm. And at least in the United States, the Tokyo war crime trials have largely been forgotten and largely seen as victor's justice, which is just simply not the case. Um, mm. So I think, um, you know, if there were lessons for the Japanese, uh, I would say think, think of how Germany has handled the legacy of World War II. I always think of, for example, Chancellor Willy Brandt's very, very dramatic visit uh, to Warsaw uh, to apologize. Um, and I often think of how Israel and Germany often will condemn um, actions of anti-Semitism. They'll often, often issue statements the same day condemning is, issues, issues of anti-Semitism right. uh, around the world. So okay. I think, um, I would say I would just leave, yes, let me, let me turn it over to others. Okay, let's turn to others. Uh, Professor Watanabe, we also want to have a fair voice coming from you. Before I go to further details with you about this question, but I want to uh, reflect a little bit of facts uh, with our audience over there. The Japanese Prime Minister, Mr. Shinzo Abe, has vowed that his country will not go to war this time in Pearl Harbor, something he declared many times earlier. But some have been suggesting Abe's pledge hardly matches the decisions his cabinet made. Take a look at this. Abe's cabinet has approved the country's biggest annual defense budget, 43 per point six billion U.S. dollars will be spent on defense for the fiscal year starting in April. It will be 1.4 percent bigger from the initial budget for the current fiscal year. That, of course, is only one number over there. Meanwhile, the Japanese uh, government is very keen on building its military, building its defense uh, industries. Uh, Professor Watanabe, no one is arguing that Japan is having the biggest uh, military budget so far in the Asia-Pacific region. But 
uh, dependency of an ever-rising military bill together with the very possibility of erasing the peaceful constitution, the part of the peaceful, is a big concern. While at the same time, Japan has not, in the eyes of its Asian neighbors, recognized its atrocities during the war. Uh, Professor Watanabe, given such a mixture, what do you think should be the smart move from the Japanese government? Without the belief and the trust of the Asia Pacific region, can the United States, your ally, really trust you? Well, first of all, you, you see the 1.4 percent increase. Uh, maybe you know uh, this is uh, due to the uh, uh, you know personnel cost because uh, you see the uh, uh, the uh, staff uh, servicemen and women in the Japan's uh, defense force. You know uh, uh, they uh, have all to right. be paid, and uh, this payment uh, goes up, and also the exchange rate affects uh, uh, really uh, you know the amount in U.S. dollar terms. But uh, I hope that you remember that uh, we have never lifted the ceiling uh, of 1 percent to our entire budget. But so what about the change so of the Constitution, Professor ceiling, Watanabe? We don't want to go into well, the specific math because no we change. can talk about the budget for a whole year. But uh, we want to do, we want to understand how others see your actions, I mean the actions of the Japanese government and military, and whether that reflection from the others is necessarily going to help you to be a peaceful country. And what can really help you to be a peaceful country without really recognize the details of mm -hmm. the history? Very briefly from you, before I have the other two guests to wrap up with their points as well, Professor Watanabe, one sentence or two. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, you know, the, I, I quite share with you that uh, the past should not be forgotten. And uh, uh, we have to look forward. Uh, and I would like to just uh, reassure that uh, Japanese defense spending uh, is not really, you know, uh, increasing. Okay. And it has a ceiling of 1% to its GDP. Okay. Okay. So you repeat your point kind of already. When we talk about defense. Thank you very yeah. much. Uh, we certainly get your perspective. Uh, Professor Peeler, before we go, 20 seconds for you as well. I would just say one of the things that strikes me about Japan is how unmilitaristic it is, particularly compared to the 1930s and 40s. When I taught a semester in Japan, American history, I, my students there couldn't imagine serving in the Japanese military. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, one of the things I think we need to really think about is what is the future of Asia and, and how Asia is changing and how can we build a better, better both Asia, uh, trans-Asia, uh, including the United States, but really improve right. relations between all the countries involved in Asia. Mm. Professor Drew, final words for you as well, equally. What about Asia Pacific? Will the alliance between United States and Japan help us to all forget about the history and move forward in whatever direction that they want, no, or Japan I, wants? Uh, I don't think so. I think, I think the history is always there. It's just some sort of, not just a reference, it's just some sort of the warning. So then I think the future's peace and the stability of Asia Pacific should mm. firmly and notably just rest away some sort of a very appropriate and a proper handling of the history. That's a very, very significant uh, uh, way say step stone for all the regional members, we can just uh, uh, intensify cooperation okay. and uh, creating some sort of a forward uh, looking approach. Then we can get some sort of a historical bleeding lesson just uh, behind us.